Hey guys, in this video we're going to briefly review the concept of the imaginary unit I, or I's in the imaginary unit, um, and what it is, and when we use it, and how it kind of works with some rules. So let's go ahead and get started by taking a look at, say, maybe this equation right here. Oh, sorry, let me turn my pencil tool on. There we go. x squared plus 1 is 0, okay? And this is a very, very basic equation. This kind of leads into the imaginary unit I, but let's say we wanted to solve this equation. Of course, we would, uh, we would kick this 1 to the other side, and we'd end up with the equation x squared is equal to negative 1. And then to undo uh, the square, we'll just do a square root. Okay, So uh, the fact of the matter is, <coughs> x is equal to, we can say plus or minus, but for the sake of right now, we say the square root of negative 1. Now, I want you to consider this. If we were going to ask what's the square root of negative 1, really we're asking what number could you take times itself in order to get negative 1. And I want you to consider that if you tried to tell me, well, then the answer is negative 1. Well, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And if you tried to take a positive 1 times itself, you'd get positive 1. The fact of the matter is this. There is no combination of numbers that you could take times itself, okay, or no number you could take times itself to turn out a negative 1. So in order to kind of combat this situation, what we'll do is we'll just define this as being what we call the imaginary unit. We will define this unit as i. That is, whenever you see an i, we need you to think that we mean the square root of negative 1. Okay? So i represents the square root of negative 1, square root of negative 1 is i. So why do we write i? Well, to be very, very honest with you, it's just simply concise. All right? It's a nice, neat way of writing what we mean when we say this. And uh, there's a property from algebra that basically states, recall that if you were to take, uh, say, radical a times radical b, it is very, very fair to say that this is radical AB, or the product of those two factors, okay? So the reason why I mention this is because, quite possibly, what if we had the equation instead? This will be, this will be like our first equation here. Uh, we'll call this equation number two. Instead of x squared plus 1 equal to 0, what if we did like x squared plus 9 equal to 0, okay? And so in this time, we, we kick the 9 to the other side. We get x squared is equal to negative 9. And then so we'd say x is equal to radical negative 9. Now I mentioned this property up top here uh, for very good reason because if we can say radical a times radical b is radical ab, we can just as well say radical ab is equal to radical a times radical b. That is, we can take this 9 here <clears throat> and we can split it up. So we'd end up with something that says uh, this is the same thing as negative 1 times 9, or we can always just factor the negative up front, which is the same thing as radical negative 1 times radical 9. And we could extract this root right here and basically call it 3. And so what we have here is radical negative 1, which we're calling i, and radical 9, which is 3. So we would say the root here is 3i. Now, the quick way to do this, and the way that I typically recommend is this. If you look right here, I tend to give my students permission, okay? And if this is an even indexed root, that is like if it's square root right there, or fourth root, or sixth root, okay? Basically, what we can do is, right here, uh, I say you're allowed to take that negative away. You can make it a positive so long as you station an i out front. And then evaluate from there. We know the square root of 9 is just 3, and then we have 3 times i, which is what is in front. Okay. So quite possibly, you know, we will be asked to simplify numbers quite often involving the unit i. Uh, but let's go ahead and explore i just for a minute, uh, because we're asked to simplify expressions with containing i quite often. So let's start with this. We know that i, i is equal to the square root of negative 1. That being said, what if we were to encounter an i squared? Okay, well, that would be the square root of negative 1 squared. And of course, we know what happens when you square a, a radical there, a square root. It just cancels out and you end up with negative 1. Okay, so as a rule of thumb, you know, not a rule of thumb, it is just a fact. You need to remember that every time you see an i squared, it really means the same thing as just negative 1. How about i cubed? Because of our rules of exponents, we can express this as i squared times i. And my intent for doing so is basically to draw upon what we just said. We know that i squared is negative 1. So whenever we see an i cubed, we can basically keep in mind that that's the same thing as negative 1 times this i right here, times i. In other words, whenever we see an i cubed, it is the same thing as negative i. And then building on this even further, we could say, okay, so i to the fourth. Again, with our rules of exponents, since we know i squared is equal to negative 1, we'll express this as i squared times i squared. Or in other words, we could say that's negative 1 
times negative 1, which is just 1. So these are the four we want to memorize. And I say memorize like I. We usually just say I. Well, that's just I. Okay? I squared, wherever we see that, we can substitute negative 1. I cubed is always negative 1i. And then uh, I at fourth is 1. Now, you might be saying, why do I only need to memorize these four? Doesn't this pattern continue? Well, what if we were to look at I to say the fifth? It is the case that uh, it's nice to split this up into groups of i to the fourths, okay? As many as you can, because we know i to the fourth is just simply one. What I mean is, we could say i to the fifth now is i to the fourth times an individual i, and every time we see an i to the fourth here, we'll just say it's one, and anything times one tends to be, well, happens to be, itself. So that's just going to go away, and we get left with i. I just want you to see this pattern. i to the sixth, that would be like a group of four i's times i squared. What do we know about i to the fourth? Well, we know that's 1. We know i squared, that's the same thing as negative 1. So we end up with uh, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Okay, so let me, let me basically designate these here. We have i, negative 1. We'll run through a few more here. i to the seventh, that would be i to the fourth times i cubed. Uh, because we're supposed to memorize i to the fourth is 1, and i cubed we're supposed to memorize, that's negative i. We just end up with negative i here. Okay, and then we say, well, i to the 8th, whoops, let's be consistent with our colors here, huh? i to the 8th, that would be i to the 4th times i to the 4th, which is just 1 times 1. For every group of 4 i's, we end up with 1, and you get 1. Uh, I wanted to illustrate this pattern because you'll notice up here it goes from i to i squared is negative 1, uh, i cubed is negative i, and then i to the 4th is 1. This pattern, it just keeps rolling back around again, and the reason why is because we can just basically keep splitting out groups of i to the fourth. So let us do kind of an extreme case. What if we ended up with, say, i, i to the power of 87? Okay. The fact of the matter is, for every group of i to the fourth, it's just going to turn out to be 1 anyway. So really what we're looking for is kind of the leftover. So in a situation like this, what you would do is you'd you know, determine how many times 4 goes into 87. 4 goes into 87, so there's 4. 4 goes into 8 twice. 2 times 4 is, is 8, of course, minus 8 is 0, carry down to 7. Uh, 4 proceeds into 7, uno tiempo, so 4 minus 3. So really what we're saying here is this. We could basically take this i to the 87 and split it up into i to the 4th times i to the 4th times dot 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 i to the 4th times i with three of those i's left over and we would have basically looks like up top that we'd have 21 groups of this but it doesn't matter because for every i to the fourth it's just a one what we really care about is what is left over in this case it's i cubed so i cubed what do you know about i cubed it's negative i essentially what i'm getting at is this any expression of i can be boiled down to one of these four values okay either i negative 1, negative i, or 1. Very, very simple expressions um, that can be obtained from complex i expressions. So that is just kind of a review of the imaginary unit i before we hop into complex numbers.